Welcome to the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be answering in this episode is, what is a machine risk assessment? Joining me to answer this question is Devin Murray from Schmerzel, a supplier of safety switchgear devices and systems for personal and machine protection. And Devin works specifically in Schmerzel's Technicum Engineering Services Division, which focuses on machine safety, such as risk assessments, validations, and training. So thanks for joining me today, Devin. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, let's get right to the question at hand, Devin. You know, just what is a machine risk assessment? Sure thing. So uh, essentially, a machine risk assessment is a systematic approach to identify reasonably foreseeable hazards. And I, I want to emphasize those words, right? Reasonable foreseeable <laughs> uh, hazards to evaluate and, and quantify the risks associated with those hazards. And then also to provide a solution to eliminate or minimize exposure to those hazards. And essentially also re-evaluating to make sure that all hazards have been addressed and, and guarded to uh, an acceptable level. But, but with that, right, I want to just take a quick second and, and go over a, a misconception with the idea of a, of a risk assessment, right? Because a lot of times I have the discussion where we look at a machine and we identify the hazards and identify the risks. and some think that that itself is the risk assessment where it's not, right? That's the, the first part, right? The first part is identifying those reasonable foreseeable hazards. That's actually the the risk analysis, right? Identifying those hazards and the risk and then finding that solution to help minimize or again, eliminate those hazards and risk. That overall process is the machine risk assessment. Okay. Thanks for clarifying those aspects of that. So are these machine risk assessments, are, are they required for manufacturers? Uh, well, to, to answer that, uh, I want to focus on, on OSHA, right? Because OSHA, as we all, all know, that's the, the law of the land here in the United States. And as you know, they have the Occupational Safety and Health Act that was established in 1970, right? And with that, there's the general duty clause and under regulation uh, 29 CFR 1910, it states that the employer shall provide a workplace free of recognized hazards, right? Shall. And if we know anything from standards, when we see shall, that means that we have to do it, right? So OSHA says we have to provide a workplace free of recognized hazards. And if we you know, dig deeper into this act and we look at CFR 1910.212, which is the requirements for all machines, they start off or that regulation starts off by stating that hazards shall be guarded, right? So again, we have that shall statement. Um, And if we go back to, you know, what a risk assessment is, it's identifying hazards as, you know, OSHA says we shall do. And it's guarding those hazards, as OSHA says we shall do. So when we look at those requirements from OSHA, yes, right, a risk assessment is required. Um, the actual process and you know what it looks like, that's completely up to you. There's regulations and standards in the industry that you know you can use as guidance. Uh, but the actual you know, the process itself, that that is required. Yeah, there's not a lot of gray area with a word like shall. It's definitely not should. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so based on the OSHA regulations you were mentioning there, you know, it sounds like all equipment in a manufacturing or a processing plant does require a risk assessment. Uh, is that a correct assumption or is it just certain types of equipment that fall within the scope of a machine risk assessment? Yeah, sure. So, so even with, with that, you know, I, I want to again go back to to OSHA, right? Because again, they're, they're the law of the land, right? And you know, OSHA gives us the the definition of a machine, 
and they they state that you know there, there's three fundamental areas the the point of operation the power transmission device and the operating controls and if you look at you know your equipment and if it has you know these three fundamental areas then that's a machine and that would fall under you know the machine risk assessment and you know if you look at some other standards like an ISO 12100 for example or even ANSI you know B11.0 they give you definitions of a machine as well and they have that same fundamental uh, definition for those, those three areas. And then they elaborate a little more. But again, you have a definition of a machine. So if it falls within this definition, you know, that's going to require a machine risk assessment. Now, in, in saying that, though, you know, there are going to be some machines that require a more you know, in-depth evaluation. Uh, there may be some machines that, you know, may not have or may not pose any significant injuries well we can document that right you can document that and say okay you know this machine was assessed on this date by these individuals and it was concluded that there were no you know reasonably foreseeable hazards to take into consideration but in order to get to that point you have to first assess it right so any machine like you have to do a risk assessment on for sure so we've been talking about machine risk assessments and the OSHA regulation at a pretty high general level, you know, but mm -hmm. drilling in a little more specifically, you know, what about machines that are designed to be inherently safe, like a collaborative robot, for example, you know, does the OSHA regulation around machine risk assessment apply to them too? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, for sure. And, and I mean, if we go back to that, that general duty clause, right, it states that, you know, the employees shall make sure that you have a, a, a safe working environment. So that includes collab robots as well. And you know, again, I look at the a misconception with collab robots because like you said, they're designed to be inherently safe. So a lot of times I've seen situations where, you know, a, a end user would buy a collab robot, right? It inside the manual that you know says it meets these standards. It says it's inherently uh, safe, so you know they 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 buy it, they purchase it, they plop it into the application, and they automatically assume that it's safe, right? And that's not the case. Um, when you look at these standards surrounding collaborative robots, such as you know ISO TS fifteen oh six six and uh, ISO ten two eighteen, and you know bring it back home anti RA R15.06, they all state a risk assessment shall be carried out, right? Again, that, that, that shall statement. And that's really because the cloud robot can be used in an application that's unsafe, right? So if you're using a cloud robot in its true collaborative form, where it's in the same working envelope as the operator, and that collab robot that's been designed to be inherently safe is now, you know, you know, moving a part that's, you know, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's a hazard, right? And we have to do an assessment to identify that hazard. So, so yes, even, you know, collab robots or equipment that's been designed to be inherently safe, we, we still have to assess those in the environment. So since there's clearly no escaping the regulation, <laughs> as you made very clear here, you know, right. how are the completed risk assessments that shall be performed, <laughs> how are those filed and recorded in order to be in compliance? Yeah, so 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 again, the, the process for the risk assessment, it, it's completely up to you, right? How, how do you want to go about doing it? You know, what are going to be your parameters for for the risk? You know, what are you using for that, that arbitrary quantitative number, that HRN number, that hazard rating number, right? That's completely up to you, right? But whatever you use, you want to make sure that it's standardized throughout the, the company and throughout your site, right? You want to make sure that you have something that you can use for the machines for your company or for your site. So you want to make sure that it makes sense, right? Because you cannot take the the principles and and concepts surrounding a uh, a CNC lathe 
right? And then try to apply them to a, a printing press, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So you want to make sure that, you know, you, you have something that standardizes and that makes sense for, for your company um, and to show that you are doing your, your due diligence, again, to to uh, fulfill that, that general duty clause. Okay. So, you know, since this is something that, again, we'll hit on the shall thing that shall be performed, but it's fairly wide open as to how it's done. There's not a lot of, as you said, there's not a lot of specific guidelines about how you go about it or how you record it, you know, but who is ultimately responsible for the machine risk assessment uh, in a typical manufacturing or processing facility? Yeah. So again, the, According to, to OSHA, is the employer, right? So the employer is responsible for the safe working environment for this machine. Um, however, if you, you know, look into ANSI B11, which, you know, is a recognized relevant safety standard, ANSI B11.0 uh, specifically, uh, that calls out requirements for both the supplier or the machine builder uh, and the end user. So we'll see that there's requirements for, for both the OEM and the end user to conduct this risk assessment. And you also see inside ANSI B11.0 that up until the actual installation, there's potential for the OEM and the end user to collaborate on the risk assessment. Um, as far as like the, the individual people, like who should be part of the risk assessment team, like you said, going back to the manufacturing side, um, you want to have people that know the machine. Right. So definitely the operators, uh, maintenance personnel, uh, you want to have management there. Right? They management may not use the machine, but, you know, safety should be driven from the top down. If you want to have a, you know, a true safety culture. Right. So they should be part of the, the assessment team as well as EHS personnel. So it, it's definitely a team effort. Um, but, yeah, that, that's who should be a part of it. And again, the, the OEM has a, a part of it for the risk assessment, as well as you know, the, the end user. Okay. So now that we know who, let's get to the the where. You know, where do you recommend that manufacturers, you know, start with the risk assessment process? Yeah. So, uh, again, you want to start by finding something that, as a manufacturer, you know, you can standardize on, right? Uh, so you want to see if there's a, a type C standard that's out there that applies to your machine. And... I guess I should explain what a, a type C standard is. Uh, so a, a safety standard can be broken up into, into four types. Uh, there's a, a type A standard, which is for, for general safety. Uh, so I've been referring back to ANSI B11.0, right? That's for safety of machinery. That's real general. That's a type A standard. Uh, then there's a type B1 standard, which is for you know certain aspects of safety. Uh, such as ISO 13849, for example, that looks at the, the safety functions on the machine. That's a certain aspect of safety. Uh, then there's also a, a, a B2 standard, which looks at the requirements for a safety device, uh, such as ISO 13850. Uh, that's requirement for an e -stop. And then there's a Type C standard that looks at a specific machine. Right? So if you're a manufacturer of you know, CNC lathes, then you want to look at, for example, ANSI B11.22, right? Uh, or if you are making robots and robot cells, then there's that ANSI RA1506. So you want to you want to start with that, right? See what type C standards apply to your machine, because that's going to give you some, some guidance on those reasonable foreseeable hazards that you want to take into consideration for your risk assessment. So one last question, Devin, you know, mm -hmm. we've covered in our conversation, we've covered the what, the who, and the where, so to speak. So, <laughs> so, so let's hit the when, you know, when should the risk assessment process actually start? Perfect. Good question. So honestly, the, the sooner, the better, right? So the, the risk assessment should begin early in the concepts of designs. And when you look at the you know, the hierarchy of machine safety, you first want to see if you can design the hazard out, right? And if you can't design it out, then you move on to okay, can we can we substitute the hazard for something less dangerous, or can we provide some type of control measure like hard guards or or you know safety light curtains, for example, right? But the first thing is, can we design it out? 
Like, so if we are, you know, having this assessment process started during the design conversation, then, you know, we can, we can identify these, these hazards and try our best to design them out or, or make them even you know, less hazardous. So the earlier, the better. And again, going back to, you know, anti B11.0, they state in there too that the assessment should begin as early as possible and then, you know, updated and, and validated as the design matures. So there should be milestones in place where, you know, you are revisiting those, those, those hazards and risks of that machine as you continue that design process up until installation. Well, thank you for joining me for this podcast, Devin. I really appreciate it. And thanks, of course, to all of our listeners. And please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember, you can find us online at automationworld.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news. Thank you.